two, one. Hello, fellow Rams. You're watching Ram Life Entertainment. We're enriching the Fort Collins and Ram experience one show at a time. I'm your host, Gabe Pokras. We have a great show for you tonight. Jacob Berg from Star Watcher Studios is our guest tonight. But first, let's get, let's get to the latest entertainment news. The sketch comedy landscape is getting a blast from the past. Mad TV is returning to television. The CW announced that they have ordered eight one-hour epi one episodes of the sketch comedy series. The show will have an all-new cast, but previous cast members will return to host some of the new episodes. The revival of Mad TV will air during prime time, so, th so they will not be competing with Saturday Night Live. No official premiere date has been set. Back in January of this year, the CW aired a 20th anniversary special for the series. The special had low ratings, so it will be interesting to see how the show revival performs. Despicable Me 3 arrives in theaters next year, and Illumination has announced the voice for the film's villain. Trey Parker of South Park will voice the villain Balthazar Bratt in the upcoming movie. According to Illumination CEO Chris Melendry, Bratt is a former child star turned villain after his television show was canceled. Kind of sounds like me. This is the first time Trey Parker will voice a character in something that he hasn't created himself. Illumination also announced that the Benedict Cumberbatch will voice the Grinch in an upcoming an animated film. I mean, if you look at him, he kind of like already looks like him. He's got the same smile and uh, he's kind of just got that little smirk. I'm just wondering about the uh, Britishness, if he's going to try to cover that up. But it was a perfect choice by Illumination. Musicians have been canceling tour stops in North Carolina o over a bill that many are calling anti-LGBT. The new law in North Carolina requires people to use bathrooms corresponding to their biological sex. Many individuals see this as discriminatory against trans people. Just this week, Bruce Springsteen and Ringo Starr canceled stops in North Carolina, which is a pretty big deal. Other singers like uh, Cindy Lauper have chosen to not cancel concerts in the state. Lauper will use her show to raise public support to repeal the law instead, which is good. The band Mumford & Sons announced Thursday that they will create a fund that will, quote, support those who have made it their mission to pursue love and justice, end quote. The band also announced that they will donate part of their North Carolina concert profits to a local LGBT organization. All right, it's time for some strange news. Strange news, strange news. A British couple followed a foul stench while walking near Morecambe Bay in Lancashire, and what they found may bring them in thousands of dollars. Gary and Angela Williams came across whale vomit, better known as amber grease, and the clump they found may be worth $70,000. Perfume makers use amber grease to make scents last longer. Trade of ambergris is illegal in the United States, so it looks like I may have to visit that beach in Lancashire you know, to do some uh, treasure hunting, or I guess it's vomit hunting. All right, that's all the entertainment news we have for you. This past week has been an avalanche of new trailers. Our film guru, Frank Conley, is here to break them all down and also let us know what films we can watch this weekend. Here's a new segment we call Films with Frank. Hello Rams, Frank Conley here. We have a lot of trailers to talk about, so let's get this started. It's just the bare necessities, the simple bare necessities. Oh God, I haven't heard that song since I was like six. This movie's gonna be great for you wishing to relive your childhood memories. The Jungle Book cast includes Bill Murray as Baloo, Scarlett Johansson as Kai, and Christopher Walken as King Louie. Basically, a story is about a human child, Mowgli, escapes from the wrath of the tiger, Shere Khan, into the Indian jungle. Guided by his animal guardians, he creates a new life for himself in the jungle, while trying to avoid the ferocity of Khan and the seductiveness of Kai. The Jungle Book comes out today, so go to your local theater and check it out. It will not be a waste. What's up with Ice Cube doing all these comedies nowadays? I don't know, but it's working, so I'll let it slide. The fourth film in the Barbershop series, Barbershop The Next Cut, is still about the lovable barbers at Calvin's Barbershop, as they have to save the shop from gangs that now roam the streets of Chicago. Introducing a wide range of female hairstylists on top of the original cast, 
the clash of old and new talent creates a hilarity of pop culture references. Just in the trailer, you can see the comedic banter between the two just naturally fits and expects what a barbershop film is about. Ice Cube, Cedric the Entertainer, and Mickey, Nicki Minaj are just a few of the names for the actors. Barbershop sure deliver a ton of laughs for you this weekend, so check it out. For next, if you're like me and you're getting into a Star Wars slump, don't worry. Last week, we just got our first look at Rogue One, a Star Wars story. Rogue One's going to follow Jyn Ezra and a team of rebel spies as they steal the Death Star plans, which, as we know, led to Leia's ship being attacked above Tatooine. The film stars Felicity Jones as Ezra, with Genevieve O'Reilly repraising her role as Mon Mothra, which she played in Revenge of the Sith. This film is going to be a great holdover till the main film. And I love how Disney introducing all these strong female characters to the universe. Rogue One is coming out December 16. A team of deranged, insane serial killers are either assassins or pyromaniacs. What could go wrong? Well, we'll find out with Suicide Squad. Based on the group from the comics, the Suicide Squad, more formally known as Task Force X, is a group of supervillains that the government uses for difficult missions, so those involving sure death. With big names like Jared Level, Leto playing the clown Joker, Will Smith playing Deadshot, and Margot Robbie as a flirtatious murderer Harley Quinn, this film's going to be great. With a cameo Batman being shown in the trailer, this film may get people hyped up for DC movies again. Suicide Squad comes out August 5th. Interesting fact, Jared Level never broke character. Will Smith said he never met Leto on set before, only Joker. Based on the first book in the Harry Potter universe, and being an actual textbook at Hogwarts, Fantastic Beast and Where to Find Them takes place 70 years before the first film in New York City. Newt Scalamander, with his bottomless briefcase full of magical creatures, goes to a meeting with the Magical Congress for the U.S. Which, as you can guess, the briefcase goes full Pandora's box, releases evil all across the city, and of course it's up to Scalamander to clean up after them. This film's going to be a great insight to the more fantastic and magical beasts that we have in the world. Check it out. It's coming out in August. Yeah. Now, on Wednesday, we got a great look at what Marvel's planning to release out to Captain America. That is Doctor Strange. Now, if we think Harry Potter magic is cool, this is going to completely blow it out of the water. Based on the same character from the comics, Doctor Strange follows renowned neurosurgeon Stuart Strange after a terrible car accident leads him to discovering magic and mysticism. Benedict Cumberbatch is playing Strange in this film, and honestly, it looks like if Inception and The Matrix just had a child, like, the Ancient One punched the dude's spirit from his body. That's how insane this movie's going to get. And I'm really excited because I'm not familiar with Doctor Strange. It's coming out November 4th. Check it out. Well, that's all the film news I have for you today. On our next show, I will have a summer movie preview that you can't miss. Gabe, what films are you excited to see? That's a good question, Frank. I would probably say Suicide Squad looks pretty awesome. I am going to eventually marry Margot Robbie, so I am just going to lay that on the line. But I'm probably going to watch it just because of her. So, cool. All right. It's time for another edition of Beer Me, sponsored by the mayor of Old Town. This week, I tried a beer that crossed my path solely by fate. It was my destiny to try it. Hey guys, and welcome to this episode of Beer Me at the Mayor. They have 100 beers on tap, so it's the perfect place to do some beer reviews. So let's get started. No, that went really on this well. episode, it's it's kind of fate to me. I was actually drinking a Melvin oh, Brewing Company beer yesterday. Was it? Uh, and someone mentioned 2x4, and they said, if you ever get a chance, try it. So I got here today, and what do you we know? The mayor put it on tap. So over. I am drinking the Melvin Brewing Company 2x4 DEPA. DEPA stands for double IPA. I kind of like that. I hope it kind of catches on, honestly. They are coming out of Jackson's Hole, Wyoming. They have such a cool image, they have really good beers, and overall they just have a good identity and kind of know what they're doing. So this beer is a double IPA. It's 10% ABV, so it is, it is pretty hefty, but you would not even realize it's 10%. It is such a clean beer. It had so many floral notes and citrus notes and tropical notes. I got a lot of passion fruit in it. I got a little bit of pineapple with that passion fruit, but I will say I noticed as I kept drinking the beer, it started to get a little more malty which was a good thing because I think if I kept drinking it with it having such, uh, such flavor and such fruity tones, it would have almost gotten too sweet. 
All right, so for this beer, I'm gonna narrow down to two things that I love. The first one was I really love the, the passion fruit flavor or the tropical flavor that mixed in with the floral notes of this beer. I'm a little bit biased on that because I love those kind of flavor profiles and fruity flavor profiles in an IPA, but they did a really good job with it, so I was really happy with that there. The second thing was, was about two thirds to a half of the way as I was drinking the beer, it got a little bit more malty and I picked up on a lot of those malty tones. And that was good because with so many uh, fruity flavors, it was in risk of being too sweet. So because of that, I am gonna give this a 9.55. No, I'm gonna give this a 9.5. I'm gonna give this a 95.5 out of 10. No, a 9.5, a 9.5. So because of all those reasons, I'm gonna give this beer a 9.55 out of 10. All right, guys, that's all the time we have for you on Beer Me this week. Stay tuned with us next week. See you later. Sorry, I was having a hard time spitting that score out. I'll give myself, uh, my speech score, a 9, 5, no, a 95, no, 1, 4, 5, probably a 1, 4, 5. Coming up after the break, a look at the upcoming play at the UCA and a special comedy sketch by the Ram Life crew. The KCSU, your student-run radio station at Colorado State University. Live 24 hours a day, every day at 90.5 FM and kcsufm.com. Live local new music now and news, talk, and sports. KCSU, the radio voice of Colorado State on the air since 1964. You're watching CTV, produced by Colorado State University students, bringing you news, weather, sports, and entertainment from campus and beyond. CTV live Monday through Thursday at 7 p.m. on campus and Fort Collins on Channel 11. Repeats at midnight, 8 a.m., noon, and 2 p.m. The Rocky Mountain Collegian is your student-run news and information platform. Pick up your paper on campus or around Fort Collins Monday through Thursday with special editions Fridays. And check out collegian.com anytime for all the latest updates. News, sports, entertainment, opinion, and more. The Rocky Mountain Collegian, serving Colorado State since 1891. College Avenue has been your student magazine for the last 10 years. College Avenue prints once a month covering topics that are relevant to the CSU and Fort Collins community. We also print special editions like the graduation guides at the end of each semester, the best of CSU each fall, and the orientation guide each summer. Look for us on racks around campus, off campus, or online at collegian.com under the College Avenue tab. Welcome back from the break, Rams. It's time for our segment on the UCA. Entertainment reporter Nicole Conklin has a sneak peek of the upcoming play, Reefer Madness. Hello, and welcome back to this week's episode of Behind the Scenes at the UCA. I'm Nicole Conklin, and we're getting the inside look at Reefer Madness, the musical, opening this coming Wednesday, April 20th. Also known as 420, this opening date was intentional. Parody of a piece of government propaganda that was put out in the mid-30s about Reefer and how awful it was, a little bit with a cannibal and a homosexual and a murderer and, yeah, yeah, more specifically, it satirizes the way we used to do things and it creates kind of a terrible parallel in which we realize that we haven't changed all that much. <laughs> Through the rehearsal process, a script is transformed into a piece of moving art. The actors learn their lines while learning to use the space and their bodies to tell a story. At the beginning, we all practiced walking like monsters, which was kind of fun. Like, we all got like pictures of old movie monsters like Dracula, the Phantom of the Opera and all that stuff. And we like walked around um, our rehearsal space, just like holding our hands in really weird positions. And it was really fun. That was a fun Jumped right in. Yeah. Just kind of like go. All right. We're going to use more characters and, and motion and how. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. It's very organically done. Yeah. It's like the, yeah. It, very few things were like, all right, we're going to do it like this. This is set out. This like like the like the dance numbers. Um, we kind of did those as we went. Um, we were not choreographed really beforehand, um, so we had a lot of. The designers do research to help move the vision of the performance forward before building the world these characters live in. Tons and tons of moving parts, tons and tons of difficult moving parts, and with not a ton of uh, rehearsal time or preparation time in general, and so I think it's coming together really well. I think a lot of people have all these different visions, um, and they all 
meshed really well in the end, and so it's, it's happened to, I mean, it's been planned meticulously, but it also happened to work out in a lot of different ways than we were expecting. The director, Garrett Ayers, likes to work collaboratively with the cast and crew. You know, my process uh, at CSU is a little different than it would be, for example, in the professional world, but um, not much different. I mean, I really approach it in the sense where if I'm working with student designers or faculty designers, I'm really trying, you know, hopefully we can be peers. You know, even though there is there is that aspect of mentorship still, right, and learning. Um, but, you know, we meet early and we, we share ideas and we brainstorm. And, um, and, and again, every director is different, but in terms of my process, I like to be very collaborative. And so, you know, I, I think the show benefits by having, you know, I have a strong vision and I'm always very prepared. But some people have great ideas. And so it's, you know, and I also think just not just from a end product point of view, like, oh, the show will be better. Um, I find that the more collaborative you can be, uh, it ends up creating more of a positive morale. He's really good at like collaborative efforts. It never feels like he's telling you what to do. It feels like he's exploring that he can find what would work best. Yeah, he's always saying that he's like really willing to change anything that he's decided or anything like that. He's always open to new ideas, which is really awesome. Check it out for yourself at the UCA from April 20th to May 1st. You just come at least clear-minded enough to where you can understand the punchlines, you know? Otherwise, I'm excited to open up 420. This would be fun. You can find tickets at the box office or online at csuartstickets.universitytickets.com. Seats are filling up fast, so be sure to grab yours soon. You don't want to miss out on this crazy fun theatrical experience. Support your fellow Rams and check out Reefer Madness when it opens at the UCA on April 20th. <laughs> Opening April 20th. The UCA knows what it's doing. Ah, the students at the UCA are a talented bunch, but the crew of Ram Life is giving them a run for their money. Our crew recently shot a short comedy skit. It's a, a drama comedama. I mean, a, a drama llama. I mean, a, a dramedy. Just watch it. Take a seat, Don. My name is Mr. Dirty. You know that. Now, Don, we know that's your name, dear. Take a seat. We just want to talk. Yeah, yeah you have a problem. problem. We've had some concerns about your actions as of late. For some time now. Okay, since you've been born. No offense, dear. And how do I say this politely? You're, um, you're... You're filthy. Pine! Saw! That is not clean language! Do you want me to wash your mouths out? Father, we'll worry about them later. We're here for Dom. What do you mean you're here for me? I'm fine. Honey, I went into your room last week and I could hardly believe my eyes. There were dirty clothes all over the floor, your bed wasn't made, the walls were filthy, and there was pizza on the ceiling. It was horrifying and utterly disgusting. You're gross. You're a disgrace to the Jensen and Jensen name. The family company. company. Something has to be done. But Father! You'll never be as clean as I, Dawn. I don't want to be as clean as you. I'm Mr. Dirty. <laughs> you should be ashamed. Making Mother cry? Are you alright? Well, she's always loved you more anyways. It's, it's true. true. For good reason. Enough! You need to clean up your act, Dawn. I won't. And for the last time, my name is Mr. Dirty.
No! You got me then. Clean! I can see heaven. No! You look so clean. No! Wait, wait. No! I feel my shirt getting dirty if I decide you. No! You can wash it! You look so beautiful. You can wash it! Keep raising pine so like you raised to me. I love you, Dad. You get out of my house and never come back. Clean. That was truly a tragic family tale. All right, word is that the short is coming to be in an expanded universe. Did you know that? The next movie will most likely pit zombie Mr. Clean against the powerful Mr. Dirty, so stay tuned for that. Just kidding. We drained our entire budget on that bottle of ketchup. Coming up after the break, CSU students Jacob Berg will join us live in the studio. Jacob has helped organize a film symposium that will showcase short films. He will also discuss his upcoming film, The Runner. Me and my boy Matt had it good. He had catnip that was off the hook. But one day, he brings a girl home, and she's allergic to cats. Every sneeze was a nail in my coffin. Now I'm in a shelter. It's decent, but they don't even have Wi-Fi. All right, Rams, we have a special guest in the studio today, Jacob Burke, a student at the CSU, a student at CSU who has helped plan a film symposium happening later this month. Welcome to the show, Jacob. Hey, nice to be here. Good. Uh, I'm, I'm glad to have you as well, too. So uh, do you mind telling us about the symposium? Okay, so it's um, an event that's supposed to showcase um, any student creative short films from campus, and it's happening April 29th at 7 p.m. in Behavioral Sciences 101, the one that looks like a big giant movie theater. Mm -hmm. And um, so the event is free to all students, and also we're accepting submissions from anyone on campus. So hopefully there'll be a bunch of cool movies to show. And then at the very end of it, we're showing our movie that we spent the year working on, The Runner. Yeah. Um, do you want to tell us um, how you can submit films and things like that? Oh, sure. Okay, so um, we have an email address that's um, tiltfilmsymposium at gmail.com, and then the submission guidelines are on our Facebook page, um, Star Watcher Studios on Facebook, and so uh, it's any film between, any sh creative short film between two and ten minutes, and you just submit it via Google Drive to the email. And oh, nice. <coughs> easy enough, it. right? Yep. Oh, you made it really easy. Uh, which is good. Um, would you like our the film we submitted? Would you Would you take that? Sure. Yes. I was I was hoping that was uh, that'll be the comedic relief from all the real serious stuff. But uh, hopefully, we'll get a lot of cool films. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure you guys looking will. forward to it. Yeah. So, uh, do you want to tell me? You said you have your own um, production uh, company. So, do you want to tell us about that? How it all got started and how how you went about that? Okay. Um, yeah. So the original studio title was just something we put together when a group of us in high school were going to work on a web series. 
-hmm. And we never, en I never ended up doing any projects originally under the title while I was in high school. So I ended up saving it until I came here. And after I came up here, um, I wanted to join a film group here before finding out that there wasn't much on campus for creative film. Mm -hmm. So ended up with a group of students from one of my classes trying out uh, putting together another movie since I had done a bunch of them in high school. And so that was the first project we put together under the studio title, which was part one of The Runner. And we've continued from there, getting slowly bigger and recruiting a bunch more people. So it's well, just kind of been slow going. Slow going, but it's, it's getting some, getting some uh, momentum and everything. That's good. Uh, do you, yeah, The Runner, uh, do you want to tell us a little bit about The Runner and the process and a little bit of backstory? We have a clip, too, so we can also show that. Um, but yeah, let, I'll let you go ahead and introduce it a little bit. Okay, so the film is a dystopian sci-fi about um, the world ravaged by a super virus, and the, the characters are survivors trying to save the main character's sister before she succumbs mm. um, by getting medicine from the corporation that holds all of it. Mm. Um, so it was adapted from a script that I wrote as a, just as a script writing exercise a couple of years ago, and so we, uh, I changed it around so we could do it on campus, it was originally a little more over the top than our current production. <laughs> That's how it always works, right? You're always like, oh, no, yeah. explosions everywhere. That was, that was pretty much what it was. We had a couple of, couple of car crashes and a highway <laughs> exploded and some crazy stuff. Yeah, you should have seen the script for our Mr. Dirty thing. It was like dangling off cliffs and stuff. No. But uh, yeah, I know what you're saying. It's always more ambitious in your mind than when actually making it. Well, ori originally we weren't planning to make it, but when we changed it around and actually had people, um, it, been turning into something really cool and we got a bunch of people interested in, in acting and editing and helping out so it, um, casting kind of came together as we worked on the first part and we wow. started off with I think a third of the people we were actually shooting the movie with who had volunteered and just slowly added people in hmm. as we were going anyone who was interested in, in helping out and now we've we've had a lot of people involved. One of our last filming days, I think we had almost 30 people on set between the crowd of extras and all of our main actors so it's it's grown a lot um, and it's been a lot of fun to put together, and I would hope all the cast agrees. Mm -hmm. um, we have it almost done, so. Cool, all right, well, let's go ahead and show that clip real quick. Uh, this is The Runner. My name's Amelia. My sister has a virus, and she needs medicine. I'll trade you the medicine if you bring me a very specific computer drive. And if you want your sister to live, that's all you need to know. It's gonna be dangerous. I had to save my sister. Isn't that more important than being in a little danger? That looks intense. Don't miss your chance to submit a short film to the symposium, Rams, and don't forget to attend on April 29th at 7 p.m. in the Behavioral Sciences Room 101. For more information on the symposium, contact Jacob at jacobberg.q.com. Excuse me. All right, thank you for joining us, Jacob. We really thank appreciate you. it. Thank you for having me. I'm looking forward to seeing the film. Uh, we will be back in two weeks for our last show of the semester and my last show as your guest ever. That's right. I've been fired. No, I'm just kidding. I'm graduating, uh, which is even scary. Have a great weekend, Rams. Stay warm out there.